Hi, my name is Brian Markman. I'm Director of Education for SAE Institute in Los Angeles. And today we're going to be editing drums. More than just speeding up your workflow and showing you some fast ways to edit, I'm also going to show you how you can create these loops that you can then bring into a DJ set using something like Traktor and the Remix decks, or into something like Ableton Live that we can now use for live performances. Let's get started. So you'll notice here I've got a Logic session that's basically only got one audio track in it. I'm going to import some audio, and it's pretty easy. I can go File, Import Audio File, or I can hold Shift, Command, and I, and it'll let me import my audio. I'm going to grab my track, hit Return, and bring it in. Now I'm going to zoom out so I can see the whole thing, and that's just Control Option and my arrow keys to be able to see what I'm doing. Here's the track. Now for the purposes of this demonstration, and to give you the maximum flexibility, we're not going to worry about all the melodic stuff, we're just going to cut up the drums. So the first thing I want to do is figure out what tempo my track is moving at. To do that, I'm going to go over to the left hand side of my screen where my inspector lives. If the inspector is not showing, just go up to this blue dot here that says inspector and click it or hit I. Right? Now I'm going to go over to the inserts and I'm going to go metering, BPM counter and grab it. Now when I play back, you'll see that very quickly Logic finds the tempo. So it's 128. The reason I'm doing this is because when I turn my global tempo, which is down here in my transport bar, into 128, I can click and drag or I can double click and type. Now you'll notice that my drums line up almost perfectly on the lines here. So now what I want to do is actually cut the drums up. So I'm going to zoom in again and go over to bar 3. That gives me two bars of music. I want to cut, so rather than uh, having to go grab any tools, Logic automatically provides a secondary tool for you over here on the right hand side just by hitting Command. This tool, when I hold Command, is called the Marquee tool. Marquee is designed for selections as well as some edits. I'm going to single click while I've got the Marquee tool, and then that creates this line, and that just means that now I can move around inside of my region. Using my right arrow key, I'm going to hit it once, and notice how it snaps against the next drum beat. If I hit delete, it automatically makes a cut and I can move those drums away. So now I'm just going to hit M and that'll quickly mute all the stuff I don't want to listen to. And if I hit return, now it brings me back to the beginning of the song. And I've got the parts that I want. So great. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit plus and this will be to create some new tracks. And I'm going to tell Logic I want to do two audio and stereo tracks and hit create. Don't worry if you accidentally make monos, you can always go down to the panner and as long as there's no information, or, or to the, uh, the meter, and as long as there's no information on the track, you can always switch between stereo and mono on the fly. Right? So now I've got two extra tracks. This is where my individual drums are going to end up. Now comes the fun part. I want to edit, so what I'm going to do is click and drag with my selector over this region that I've got, and now that it's selected, I hit Z, and it'll fill up the screen with the selection. This will make it easier to see what I'm doing. Now I can do what I did a second ago with my editing by hitting command with, that brings up my marquee tool and just clicking anywhere in the region, doesn't matter. As I move left and right with my arrow keys, you'll notice that it stops for each of the individual drum hits. So now I'm going to put my left hand over my delete key and with my right hand use my arrow keys and as quickly as I can move, I can cut up these drums. Great, now all the individual drums are separated. Now comes a tip, whether you've been using Logic for a short time or a really long time that a lot of people don't necessarily know about. If I hold command and comma or go over to my preferences, it'll open up my preferences and what I'm looking for here specifically is this middle section. It says limit dragging the one direction in. I'm going to make sure that a range is ticked. What this will do is when I go to move individual sounds, they won't drift left and right. They'll only move up and down or left and right. Now I'm going to click on my individual drums, in this case my hi-hats, and you can tell they're hi-hats by them being these short little sounds with a really fast uh, attack to them and a fast decay. And if I shift click on each one of them as I go to select it, it will keep adding to the selection. So now I've selected all, just the hi-hats. I'm going to click and drag them down and notice how they can't wiggle left and right because of that, that preference that I just set. I'm going to do the same thing with the snares. Just shift click to add more. And I'm going to drag them down to their own tracks. And if we listen to our track, 
sounds identical to what we started with because we haven't moved anything out of place and we haven't changed the volumes at all. This will make it easy for us to be able to keep the integrity of the loop and not have to worry about changing anything. Now, if we go into the individual sounds, we're going to start to notice that when you cut things apart, sometimes there's little artifacts and there's some problems that we may have to clean up. So we're going to solo, just hit the solo button here at the top on, on the track header and listen to our kicks alone. Here how there's two problems. The first one being that some of the kicks have other sounds overlapping in them and you lose some of the, of the punch of the kick. We're going to have to clean those up. The other problem we've got is there's a, there's a pop that comes at the end of the sound that we want to make sure we get rid of. So let's solve each problem individually. First, let's go through and take that hit that has a, a hi-hat in the background, delete it, and replace it with a clean kick. The reason why I'm doing this is because we're separating out these loops so that we can play kicks by themselves, hi-hats by themselves, and snares by themselves, and then layer them whenever we want. This gives us a lot of flexibility in a live set. I'm going to do the same thing with the other broken one. And I'm just going to make copies by clicking on the good ones that I like and holding down Option and dragging. When you see the hand, it should have a plus in the middle of it. If it doesn't, you're going to find yourself moving things but not copying. So now I've got all kicks that are punchy, but I've still got that little click happening. In order to fix the click, it's pretty easy. If I go up to the timeline here and I click and drag, I can create uh, what's called a cycle region. It's like a loop. In this particular case, what I want is I want a cycle region that starts at the beginning of the song and it ends at the end of whatever loop I want to play. This is just so we can make selections quickly. I can turn this off quickly by clicking it or hitting C. The reason I did this because now, watch, when I click the track header up here where the track name and the buttons are, it will select everything in that area. We're doing this so we can quickly manipulate all of these regions at the same time. Over here on the left, You'll notice that inspector that we had talked about briefly. The idea with the inspector is to give you feedback, not just your faders to show you your levels or your plugins, but over here in the top left section of it, you'll actually be able to see the feedback for the information and the feedback for each individual region. Because we've selected all of these regions at the same time on this track, we can go over to the section that says fade out and click and drag up to about 20, and this will now automatically add 20 millisecond fades to the end of all these kicks. What we've basically done is take the pops out of all those click uh, out of all those kicks very very quickly. Now with my arrow key, I'm going to arrow down to the next uh, track. Same thing. Put the fade on those. Arrow down to the next one. Same thing. Put the fade on those. And we're almost there. Let's listen to it. Great. Now, if we solo those snares, we'll notice something happened. Because I kind of cut in a weird place, I have a little bit of leftovers from the kick that came after it. What we want to do is quickly draw a box around these two uh, regions and hit Z. And again, it'll, it will zoom to fill the selection. And you notice there's a little bit of extra here. We can zoom in so you can see it. Again, just holding Control Option and your arrow keys. Because both of these regions are selected simultaneously, I can trim them simultaneously and I don't have to do the work twice. So I'm just going to go to the bottom right corner of the region, drag it in, and now we'll hopefully get a really nice little uh, clean sound. So now we've got our sounds that sound pretty good. And if we turn off our solos and listen to them, there we go. Now we've just got to turn these into something that's the right length that we'll be able to bring into other programs, Tractor, Ableton, whatever we want, and not have to worry about those lengths not lining up and looping properly. Because what makes these things powerful is the flexibility that we have by making sure that the amount of timing that they're playing is exactly perfect. So to do this, first thing, we're going to ma quickly map a key that will make doing this uh, function a lot faster. To map anything in Logic, it's really simple. All you do is hit Option K. Option K brings up your key commands. And in order to be sure that you have all of your key commands, uh, you can go over to Options and Expand All. And Expand All will make sure that every single key command in the program is showing at the same time. This is a handy way for you to learn hotkeys also if you don't know a lot of them in Logic. If you start typing over on the right-hand side, uh, if you look over on the right-hand side and start typing here, you'll notice that it'll start 
limiting your number of options so that it just shows you what you're looking for. In this case, we're going to use a function called bounce regions in place. In order to map anything in logic, whether it's for a hotkey here, or if you want to MIDI map something from here, because you can both MIDI map and use hotkeys simultaneously for a lot of the main functions, you single click on it, so it's selected, and then you can go over to learn by key label, and you can just hit the hotkey you want to use. In this case, you can see that I've already mapped it to command B. So what we're, what we're doing is we're doing bounce, in, uh, bounce the regions in place. So now, again, we're going to go to our uh, marquee tool. I'm going to hit command, make a selection with my marquee tool, and then command B. Right? Pretty simple. And it's going to ask me, what do I want? It says, destination is new track, leave the source. That's going to be fine for now. You'll notice that it makes me a region that is exactly the right size, two bars of music, but included the silence. This is key, so when I drag it into Tractor or I drag it into Ableton later, now I'll be able to not worry about this thing looping perfectly and keeping time. Right? So I'm going to click on the other tracks and do the same thing. Right? Hold down Command. Select the entire area, Command V, return. And the cool part is every time it saves the, the, the presets that you just used, so you don't have to keep telling it how to do what, what it's going to do. And finally, with my snares, same thing. Now, it's important when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you are specifically on the track that you're working on so you're bouncing the right thing. Great. So now I've got our three pieces of audio that we want to use. They're all the right length, and they all have our sounds. The last step that we're going to need is we're just going to need to be able to get them back out of Logic. In order to do this, it's pretty simple. I control click on, on the printed ones, and the way you can tell is these are the ones that have the silence in them. Printing is just the term we use for actually bouncing the audio out to a file that has all the plugins we want or has all this, the length that we want. I'm going to control click, and my choices are going to allow me to go through now and turn this into whatever I want. I'm going to use a function called convert, and I'm going to say convert to new audio files. What this will do is allow me to save a copy wherever I want. In the particular case to save the copy that I want, I'm just going to put desktop as my destination, and I'm going to call this first one kick. I'm going to go down to my hi-hats, control click, same thing. You'll notice that now at the very top, of my contextual options, it actually lets me do the last thing that I did as my first choice. So that makes it fast and easy. Convert to new audio files, same thing. I'm going to call this one hats and let it go. And now I'm going to select my last one. I'm going to go convert to new audio files and call this one snares. Great. So it looks like nothing happened, but you'll notice that uh, it the names now took over on the, uh, the regions that I've got here. And if I hide my logic, and I can go from here, I can just go Command H, you'll notice that here on my desktop where I saved them, I've got these three files that when I play them back, they're exactly the right length, including all the silence. So now I've got a flexible and powerful tool that I can drag into other programs to be able to use to play. So this is sort of the tip of the iceberg for live performance and for editing. Just wanted to show you a quick way to be able to make a tool that's powerful and useful across a lot of things. And if you've been using Logic for a long time, or maybe not even for so long, this is a quick way for you to start to get to work and feel comfortable using the tools. So come back for more videos, and we'll show you a bunch more tricks. Hope you learned something.